Hey there guys, Jordan in the know here with the Moto X 2nd Gen. Now, I know that the Pure Edition just came out, but there's going to be a lot of people looking at this phone in particular and saying, hey, that might be a pretty good deal right now because of the massive price drops, obviously, because the newer phone is coming out. So, considering that a lot of people may be purchasing this, I figured that I should make an updated review about it because a lot has changed since day one the phone has come out and now. So I'm going to start off by saying that the Moto X 2nd Gen is pretty much a really killer deal right now. You can get one used on eBay or Amazon anywhere between 170 and 250 in decent condition and even for a Snapdragon 801 and a chassis made out of metal, you're going to be hard pressed to find any phone at a better deal. Even after a year, the Snapdragon 801 seems pretty fast and it handles 5.1 Lollipop pretty much just as well as any other modern processor out there, which is a really good sign of the longevity of the device. I really didn't notice a difference in speed switching from KitKat to Lollipop, switching from the S6, the G4, or the iPhone 6 to this phone, so I'd say Motorola's done a pretty good job keeping the phone fast while working with an older processor. Another department that Motorola has done well besides performance is the construction of the phone. Well, to what we can see and feel anyways. The entire chassis, speaker grill, and Motorola dimple are all made out of metal which is pretty awesome considering that those are the areas that are going to be touched most frequently and depending on what model you get, you can end up with leather, wood, or matte plastic like mine was. If I was to go back and buy a new one, I'd probably go with wood. I feel like it'd look a little bit more classier and feel better in the hand, but if you get the matte plastic like mine was, it just looks 10 times better with a skin on it. The phone has a 5.2 inch display size as well, which is big enough for me considering that I switched from the 5.5 inch OnePlus One, and the 1080p AMOLED display is just fine. It's sharp, it's colorful, there's no real complaints here, and the ergonomics are spot on too. It's sort of rounded towards the back and tapered off towards the edges, and it just has a really appealing feel in the hand. It feels sturdy and packed with no real hollow areas. I'm actually kind of a fan of the overall design too, which is weird because when the phone first came out, I told myself that there was no way that I was going to buy this. And now here I am telling you how much I like the design. And at the end of the day, it's going to have to grow on you for sure. You've probably heard this from a million people, but I'm going to say it too because it's completely true. But this Motorola crater gives the phone so much character. And I know that it's just a crater <laughs> on the back of a phone, but no matter how I pick the phone up or whatever I'm doing with it, my fingers will religiously huddle against that crater and make the simple task of holding the phone just better. And I, it's kind of, it's really weird to explain, so just trust me on this one, if you're going to end up getting the Moto X after this video, the dimple is probably going to be one of your favorite design features. This phone has struck a pretty nice balance between features and function while maintaining a pretty accurate perception on how Android should act. Motorola has taken the same approach that they have for years, and that's keeping Android pretty close to vanilla while adding a few features, and at this point, I probably wouldn't even call them features. I feel more accurate calling them really useful tweaks, and one of my favorite is the double chopped turn on the flash, and this is the best way to access the flashlight on any phone that I've used. Easier than OnePlus's off-screen gestures, easier than the iPhone Action Center, and easier than downloading a cheesy flashlight app. It works every time I tell it to pretty much without fail, and same can be said about the Moto Voice and Active Display. Moto Voice is a pretty awesome extension of Google Now, you can shout pretty much any command at it without ever having to touch it, and it's pretty nice to see something just work so well. And Moto Display is a non-intrusive lock screen on a lock screen. It's supposed to be a quick way to your notifications, and in most cases it can be, but your usage may vary. So there's two reasons why you shouldn't pull the trigger on this phone. One of which is going to be battery and two of which is going to be camera and honestly, neither of those are really going to get better over time. So long story short, the Moto X battery, you'll get about three hours of on-screen time, four if you're lucky, and in my usage, it lasted me until about the end of the day at eight or nine o'clock. So with that being said, it's up to you. And it's not gonna get any better than that. At this point in the review, I would tell you just to move on with your lives, not even watch this part of the review because we're going to be talking about the camera. And the camera is just so bad. Like I like I can't there are some phones out there that are way cheaper with this phone than this phone and still have a better camera. It is god awful. It's a terrible camera. So 
that's it. You can move on to make a choice right now, or you can listen to me talk about the camera and see if there's any hope. But I'm going to tell you there's no hope. You, you, you can still go back and think that this phone is good in everything, but a battery and camera and just move on from there. But if you want to hear me talk about this abomination of a camera, then keep watching. All right, I overreacted a lot. The camera isn't that bad. It's just not great compared to most devices released around the same time as this phone was. As long as you're in broad daylight or outside, the Moto X has some potential to take some really stunning photos, but anything less than broad daylight and you're going to end up with some really grainy photos. Something else I really didn't like about the camera was the stock camera app. I know that you could easily swap camera apps, but since Motorola is claiming that this app is a feature, I wanted to take a closer look. The camera app is pretty much the reason why photos won't get in focus. It tries too hard to be too simple, but in the process of trying to be too simple, it really just makes taking a photo kind of frustrating. Most phones have adopted the tap to focus mechanism followed by hitting the shutter button, but this system is already perfected and doesn't really need to be changed. Not that I'm saying that I'm against change, it's just that change has to be for the better and has to improve on the existing methods and Motorola's autofocus just isn't good enough to replace tap to focus and for the time being it would probably save you a lot of energy just to switch to a different camera app. So at the end of the day is the Moto X second gen the perfect phone? And I'm going to tell you, absolutely not. But for 170 bucks, you really can't beat the price. Obviously, there's some phones in close competition, like the OnePlus One, the Zenfone 2, and I hate to say it, but the Nexus 5. Someone also figured out how to put CyanogenMod Mod on the Fire Phone, and there's really a lot of good competition out there in that same 170 to 250 price bracket. But I'll talk about that another day. But anyways, guys, this has been Jordan in the Know. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.